Star Wars Squadrons released this week, and I have been playing almost non-stop. Seriously, it was an exercise in self-control to step away long enough to actually make this video. That said, no game launch is perfect, and Star Wars Squadrons is no exception. So I'm here today to talk about the top 10 things that Squadron players hate. At number 10, we have a lack of pilot customization. The pilot customization options is roughly the same system used in another Star Wars game. Namely, that being Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic from 2003. Basically, you have 10 preset human heads to choose from, and 4 alien heads if you're playing as the Rebels. Fortunately, this isn't too much of a problem since you only really see your pilot in the menu and the two minutes you spend waiting for the other players to ready up when you're doing fleet battles. The only customization option that really matters, at least in regards to your pilot, is the helmet, since that's the best way to distinguish yourself within the game's UI. Speaking of the UI, one decision I really question is the absence of player IDs in the UI. You can see five helmet icons along with whatever ship they're running, but the player IDs and gamer tags are totally absent. This can make callouts a little difficult when you're wanting to call out the person playing as the U-Wing to come help you out, or you see that the Thai bomber is going to make a run and you want to call them out, but without actually seeing the ship with the player ID on top of it, you would have to cycle through your targeting computer to find the person flying the U-Wing or the bomber or whatever and read their player ID on your actual instrument display. This is especially frustrating because some parts of the UI will have player tags, such as when someone heals you or pings something or the like, but it won't associate it with the persistent UI at the top with the helmets and the ship icon. Another thing players seem to hate is the way the ping system works. This one isn't a unified hatred though, but everyone hates something about it. Some players will hate that other teammates will just load out random pings incessantly, while other players hate that their teammates aren't pinging themselves or acknowledging their own ping. This all stems from the fact that the ping system requires you to actually acknowledge a ping to highlight what your ally has targeted. If you're looking that way, you can see a little ping icon over the stuff that your ally has targeted, but it works really well if you actually acknowledge the ping so that it will show up on your targeting computer. This can work really well if you're also on mic, where you can target your ally's tail to tell them where their pursuer is, or you can sick your whole team on an enemy that you just hit with a disabling missile. I think one thing that is really helpful about the ping, and something that a lot of people haven't been taking advantage of, is that pinging isn't just for your squad mates, because the pings will also tell your friendly AI what to do which can be really useful in a pinch and can turn the AI from some fairly useless wanderers into a unified strike or protection force. Squadrons is designed to be fully supported by HOTUS controls. If you don't know, HOTUS stands for Hands-On, Throttle, and Stick. And it basically lets you dive into that fully immersive piloting experience, almost like a TIE Fighter or X-Wing fighter sim. However, the HOTUS launched with some pretty annoying issues, which has made the HOTUS and flight sim communities a little miffed by this game. Not least of these issues being a substantial dead zone in the stick. However, as frustrating as this is at first, it just needs a little attention and most of these issues can be fixed with some tinkering. I was playing with Star Wars IRL yesterday and we both eventually found different ways of fixing our HOTUS dead zones. He did it by adjusting the curvature in the actual HOTUS software and I did it just by cranking up the in-game sensitivity all the way to maximum. Try these out for yourself, try mixing and matching them, see what works, but you'll almost certainly need to do something to mitigate this issue. And that's not even the only issue with the HOTUS. Another one seems to be the button mapping. The out-of-the-box button controls are just absolutely terrible. I played through the entire campaign remapping things as I went along, and I don't think I kept a single default input except for the primary trigger fire. For example, the throttle was originally mapped to these little dials here on the side, but I think most people would want them mapped to the actual throttle. Heck, the stick wasn't even inverted. I feel like I get pushed to try inverted controls in games like Halo and Fallout New Vegas, but in an actual flighter sim with built-in HOTUS controls? 
No, they automatically assume that it's not inverted and it's gonna stay that way and they don't even give me an option to change it unless I go into the menu. In the end, I did finally arrive at a mapping that was efficient. It just took almost 10 hours of constantly remapping as I played the game. However, once I got there, I definitely noticed my plays getting significantly better. Again, this is just an issue that requires some work to fix, but it doesn't have to be an ongoing issue. At number six, we have not having enough time to play. All right, so there's some actual and real issues with Squadrons, but the game has already amassed an incredibly dedicated community. Me personally, I bought a HOTUS just to play this game and I'm not regretting that decision a single bit. As a disclaimer, I have absolutely no affiliation with EA whatsoever and I have been actually pretty outspoken in my critique of them with Fallen Order and Titanfall 2 pretty much being the only two EA games that were put out recently that I actually applaud. And I'm happy to say that this game has made the list. You can actually go back to my first video on Squadrons when the first trailer was released and you can see how pessimistic I was. And yet now, here I am and it takes every amount of willpower I have to stop playing the game long enough to actually make this video. At number five, we have ranking issues. Another thing some players have encountered is an issue with the fleet battles, placement matches, and rank progression. It seems like many players are automatically being placed at Maverick 1, which is just bad for everyone. Hardcore players are annoyed, and understandably so, that they will have to spend weeks climbing the ranks to get to a more accurate rank reflective of their skill. But on the other hand, this is arguably a worse problem for casual players since they are more likely to be match made with hardcore elite pilots who were placed in Maverick by mistake. And this is going to be a huge problem because no one likes to play a game where they are just getting stomped all the time, which means that we are eliminating a large part of our community potentially by them getting annoyed by constantly getting stomped by the elite get good community. EA and Motive have already announced that they are actively looking into this and they should have a fix soon. However, the community is still asking for more answers, wondering how soon and what type of fix will be in place. A majority of players are asking to have all players reset and asked to place again. And as annoying as that would be, I would much rather that than being match made with another ace in my game. At number four, we have crossplay invites. Since Squadrons has crossplay support, you can play with your friends no matter what system you're on. However, if you're playing with a friend on another system, you will need to find that friend through EA service and invite them to be a friend on their website and then invite them to your game through the Squadrons in-game friends list. And this is already a bit of a hassle, but it's exacerbated by the fact that the game's UI doesn't have any lingering notification bubble, or to my knowledge, even any uh, noticeable or easy to find friends list. I stumbled onto the friends list by mistake by randomly pushing buttons, and now I know where it is, but at least on the PC with the HOTUS, I don't see any easy to find way of knowing that someone had sent me a notification. I had it a couple times where I'm in a game and my friend was sending me an invite, which I didn't see because I was in a game, and I never knew that he was online and wanted to squat up even when I came out of the game. I didn't see the invite because there was no little notification bubble on the UI telling me to check my notifications. I actually would have to manually go into my friend list and then toggle towards the invitation to page to see if there were any outstanding notifications. And almost every time I do that, there is at least one notification waiting there for me. I think that this just needs some sort of lingering notification icon, something that you can see on the main menu that tells you you have unread requests. This fix would be a major boon to the community, especially for those playing with friends on other systems, making the most out of that awesome crossplay feature. At number three, we have people who leave matches, and this one is especially annoying if you are trying to place in the ranking system. If you don't know, you have to play 10 ranked matches in order to place and gain your own rank. But whenever someone leaves, and it can be from your team or the enemy team, 
the game doesn't count that game towards your rank. This is done to keep things fair so that you don't take a hit if you're at a disadvantage doing a 3v5, for example, which is a really good system. It can just be really annoying when some players have to play 23 matches just to find 10 that count. At number two, we have a weird one. All right, so somehow we've reached the era that people are actually complaining to EA that they want to pay them for more DLC. In case you don't know, this game is totally complete and comes out of the box entirely devoid of microtransactions and DLC. I was, even though they had kept announcing that, I was still holding out that there had to be some way that you could pay real money to gain in-game currency. But no, there are absolutely no microtransactions, there's no in-game store, nothing. And there are no plans to add new Starfighters, missions, game modes, or upgrades or modifications. There's no option to purchase in-game currency with real money, nothing. While some customization options are time-locked, you can still view them now even though they won't be available until Operation 2. That said, the game is so addicting that people are already starting to brainstorm what Motive can do to keep the experience fresh for them. And the subreddit has already had a couple posts, at least that I've seen, could be more, from players who are giving EA the green light to put out more paid DLC for Squadrons. To be honest, I don't know how that would work since people who don't buy the DLC wouldn't have access to the new ships or upgrades, but I guess it helps that the options in Squadrons are more side grades rather than upgrades, meaning that they aren't really an obvious step up, you're trading one thing for another, but all ships are all around balanced and there is no option that is completely and totally better. Finally, at number one, we have the absence of the B-Wing and the TIE Defender, two longtime fan favorite ships, and both of which got to really shine in Star Wars Rebels. Considering how much this game actually references Rebels, it may have been a surprise to many that these fighters were not one of the many Easter eggs and references to that show. However, there is a really good reason for these ships not being playable in the game, and it's simply that these ships are just too good. The Blade Wing, later renamed the B Wing, was shown to be faster and more hard hitting than any ship in the Rebel fleet. Even though bomber classes and squadrons do have access to the focused laser beam ability, which is focused by the Blade Wing and Rebels, it is not quite as strong as the one we see on the B-Wing in that show. The B-Wing's only real weakness in canon was that it was a terrible anti-squadron fighter, which would make it very difficult to use in dogfights if it was built correctly in the game, but this would be counteracted by players just not using the B-Wing until the final phase when they were going against the capital ship, then everyone loads up with B-Wings and just melts the Star Destroyer instantly. This would make one phasing the Star Destroyer happen almost every time from the Rebels' perspective and would make it incredibly difficult for the Imperials to regain the upper hand. The TIE Defender would even be less balanced, being the most advanced ship in existence during the Galactic Civil War. The TIE Defender was faster, more durable, and had top-of-the-line shields, and the second generation had the most powerful cannons of any ship around Rebel or Imperial. The in-lore reason, both in canon and legends, for the Defender was the exorbitant cost, rivaling the Death Star for Imperial funding, with only a single squadron's worth being actually produced to completion. And while you might think that these ships, the B-Wing and the Defender, could balance each other out, the problem would be that they would outshine the existing four ships in the current lineup, and it would make them almost useless or a waste of time to pick the TIE Interceptor when you could pick the TIE Defender, which is just as fast, but hits harder and has shields. But anyway, those were 10 things that Squadrons players hate. I have been playing this game almost non-stop since release, and I am absolutely loving it. Have you guys been playing? What do you guys think, and what ship is your favorite to fly? Let me know which ship you are maining down in the comments below, because as always, I want to know what you, my friends, have to say about our favorite galaxy far, far away. Don't forget to like and subscribe, or if you learned absolutely nothing new, feel free to leave a thumbs down, absolutely guilt-free, because that tells me I'm not doing my job. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always... May the Lord be with you, now and forever.